Hello and welcome to Downtime Activities. Matthew here. Where, Wolf? Here, Wolf. Here, 5e D&D build. Werewolves are super cool, evocative, iconic characters, but I've always had a hard time finding a good way to play one in the 5th edition rule set. There's rules in the monster manual for playing a werewolf or, or a character becoming a werewolf, uh, but those aren't exactly balanced and not really something you could start a character with. And there is a really good class, subclass kind of mixture that we are going to be using here that makes for a pretty perfect werewolf. However, you don't get your path until third level with this class, and so if you're starting at first level, it kind of felt like you weren't a werewolf until third level. And unless there's a really perfectly timed story moment turning you into a werewolf around that time, that doesn't really make sense. So if you are wanting to play a werewolf from first level, this is the best build I think to do that. Also, if you are making a higher level character, I think this combination that I'm gonna go over here is still worth doing just because it's really powerful and feels very werewolfy. The key to this build is going to be combining a race and a class. The race is what we're going to go over first, and that is the shifter race. What the shifter race is going to give us is a 30 foot movement speed, dark vision of 60 feet, proficiency in the perception skill, and then our shifting ability, which is a bonus action and kind of depends on the type of sub race we choose. Also when we shift, we'll be getting temporary hit points equal to our level plus our con modifier. For this build, we are going to do the long tooth sub race, and the reason for this is its bonus action bite attack that it gives once we shift. It'll also give us proficiency and in intimidation, but the bite attack is what we're really looking for here. Another one that kind of feels like it would work well with this would be the razor claw, uh, but we're not going to go with that because the bonus action attack that it gives is an unarmed strike which uh, we're not going to be able to use our natural weapon claws that we're going to get later on when I discuss the class uh, as those unarmed strikes. So it doesn't really work very well if we're making regular bonus action unarmed strikes and just overall doesn't really work with the build as well as the long tooth does. For our background on this character, we can really do whatever you want, whatever your background idea makes sense for your character. Um, I think Folk Hero or Outlander make a lot of sense for your kind of typical or classic werewolf characters, uh, but there's no piece of the build that relies on the background, so whatever you like here. As for the class, we're going to be playing Barbarian, and Barbarian uh, at first and second level is just going to be regular Barbarian, and while it makes us tough and strong and powerful as a, a melee combatant, it doesn't really do anything for us as a werewolf. But at third level, we are going to get to choose our Barbarian Path, and for this, we're going to be going to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything to get the Path of the Beast. This is the class that I think most perfectly fits as a lycanthropic character. It was literally designed for that, so it works really well for that. At third level, when we take this path, we're going to get our Form of the Beast, which will give us an option of natural weapon attack that we can do whenever we're raging. There are Bite, Claws, or Tail attacks with this. I'm going to go with the claw attack 9 times out of 10 on this, and we'll go over why in a little bit. At 6th level, you'll get the bestial soul, which will make your natural weapons, whether it's the bite, the claw, or the tail, uh, considered magical for overcoming resistances, and you'll also get another benefit when you transform with your rage, gaining either an improved swimming, climbing, or jumping capability. At 10th level, you're going to get the Infectious Fury, which will allow you to, when you hit creatures, make them make wisdom saves to either make melee attacks against targets nearby as a reaction, or uh, take extra psychic damage from your attack. And at 14th level, you'll get the Call of the Hunt ability, which will give a temporary uh, hit point buff to you based on a number of nearby allies, and then give each of those allies a bonus to their damage. Now let's go over how these are going to combine together for a really powerful turn of attacks. With the natural weapon claws from our form of the beast, we are going to be able to make a claw attack and an additional claw attack as part of the same action, no bonus action or multi-attack required. This means at 5th level when we get multi-attack, we are going to be able to, with our single attack action, make three claw attacks. When we combine this, with our shifting ability, giving us a bonus action bite attack, 
we're going to have a total of four attacks at fifth level onward, so long as we are both shifted and raging with our Path of the Beast, Form of the Beast. This stacks really well to just dish out massive amounts of damage. You're going to be making three claw attacks and a bite attack, all of which are strength based and going to be getting your bonus from uh, rage damage, and all of which could potentially be at advantage with reckless attack. This really feels like a werewolf to me. You're transforming, you're sticking out your claws and your big sharp teeth, and you are just tearing into your opponents. That's pretty much the build. It's pretty simple. It's just this race class combination so that even at level one, you have the ability to transform somewhat into a bestial form and feel kind of lycanthropic. You'll still get more powerful as you level up and feel even more like a werewolf or other lycanthrope creature later on. But this is the best way I could come up with to feel like it even at level one. A couple quick things to add to this build, uh, a couple of feats you could consider. Uh, one is the Savage Attacker. It'll just give you some more consistent damage output with some rerolls. Uh, or my personal favorite to add to this is the Slasher. It'll allow you to give a plus one to your strength or dex. And whenever you're hitting with slashing attacks, once per turn, you can give a minus 10 movement speed to the creature you hit, making it harder for them to run past you or away from you and towards other maybe less tanky members of the party. It'll also give you the ability that when you crit with a slashing attack, you can give disadvantage on the creature you hit's attacks. This is so good with Reckless Attack. When you're making four attacks, three of which are going to be dealing slashing damage, and you recklessly attack to give them all advantage, your chance of critting goes up a lot. And that means that if you do successfully land a crit with one of those claw attacks, then they are not going to have that advantage back on you that they normally would from Reckless Attack, because you're going to give them disadvantage with this feat. It combines beautifully with this class, so I think it's a must-take at some point while you're leveling up. One other consideration is a multi-class. Overall, I'm going to say that this multi-class option is far more flavorful than powerful, and I recommend going straight Barbarian. But if you wanted to, you could do a two-level dip into Circle of the Moon Druid. That way you'd be able to have the animal transformation and turn into a dire wolf. And that feels pretty werewolfy to be able to turn into a regular big large wolf as well. But I find it to be more of a flavor versus function sort of choice. If that's the kind of werewolf you're going for that could transform either into a wolf or into a hybrid form, then that's a great way to do it. Otherwise, I'd stick straight Barbarian. That has been my 5th edition werewolf build. Hope you found it cool. Uh, I really like it. I think it's an awesome build that really lets you feel like the transformed werewolf tearing through your enemies, making tons of really hard-hitting attacks. Uh, if you want to, go ahead and give it a try in your game. If you have another way that you've come up with of building a werewolf or like lycanthrope style character, throw that in the comments down below too. Now go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities. <laughs>